Uh, hi, this is Oliver Blair from uh, Massey University School of Design in Wellington, New Zealand. Uh, again, and I'm going to talk to you about CryEngine and um, how to do these particle effects. So you can sort of see this um, weird sort of shape I've got going on here. Uh, what this is doing is it's sort of generating this uh, geometry every so often based on some rules. And if I sort of move it up, it'll sort of follow and move up. Wow, that looks real cool underneath now. Um, anyway, so basically I'll, I'll show you how to do that. So if I delete him, <coughs> it will sort of go away after a while. Alright, so the particles, they're up under uh, view, open view pane, and then you go to the uh, database view. If we check this out, so I've got a whole bunch of different tabs up here. Uh, what we want is particles, and... So that was that one I just had before, and this is another test sort of fish one that I made uh, a wee while back. So if I, what you can do is you can add a new item up here. So this is like the sort of library stuff over here on the left, and then this stuff here is the uh, like item. So what I want is to add a new item, and I'll call it uh, um, uh, weird particles. Uh, particles uh, one cool so that's great um, what I want to do is I'll, I'll drag this into the level hopefully did that come up somewhere I can't see where that is so what I do is I'll just uh, oh man was that in there Okay, yeah, it's way over there by my fish. Uh, I'll bring it up a little bit. Here we go, there he is there. Cool. So the first thing you want to do is um, put this count. I'm going to put that on 10. Over here in, under the emitter sort of a box thing. And I'll, I'll check continuous. And I'll put particle lifetime, I'll put that on 1. And the next thing... <coughs> you want to do is, is set this geometry down here under appearance geometry I'll click this little tab here to open up something that's the uh, the massive model that I was using in that little example right at the beginning but uh, I'll try to bring something that we sort of recognize in I'll go to objects uh, oh here we are, it's a box cool, I'll bring that in so hopefully that's is that working? Uh, nope Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, so there he is now. Is it was it was that too far away for it to work? Oh yeah, it's working now. Cool. So there's our box. You can, so you can sort of see it's emitting these uh, these uh, boxes all the time, and it's just because I'm not moving the object around. That it sort of looks like it's static. So you can sort of move the the particle effect around, and that'll uh, leave this trail. So what if we want it to sort of uh, float up into the sky? Uh, to do that you can go to, uh, it should be over here under movement, and then there's a gravity scale. So at the moment it's on zero. So if we put it on one, they're going to sort of drop down, fall to the ground. Are they falling into the ocean? Is that where they're sort of disappearing? Or? Oh, there they go into the ocean. Uh, so that's sort of like falling down. Uh, so negative one should make them fall up, float up. Uh, cool. So see how they're sort of stopping right, right there. Why, why aren't they floating all the way up? It's because the particle lifetime I've put on one, so it's one second. So what I'll do is I'll change the count from ten. I'll just leave it on one, and that sort of gets a better sense for what's going on. So it's emitting one particle and the, the, the lifetime of the particle is going to be one second after it ends its life it's another one is, is sort of generated so if I change this lifetime to 10 it'll sort of uh, float all the way up whoa, it's way up there uh, that's too long so I'll change that to 2 seconds here we go So that should sort of make sense now. 
So, and, and then with this count, if I put this on two, it sort of figures out that it should be like this particle lifetime divided by two or divided by 10, and it's going to emit. So there's a sort of constant stream of things being emitted up. Uh, of course, I'll just leave that on one so we can get a heat around it a bit more. And that will change the uh, rotation of it. So you can sort of see over here there's random angles, random rotation. Uh, maybe what if I change this uh, Z? So I think it's X, Y, Z. So if I change this to 100, what does that do? Does it change anything? It should sort of change something. Maybe this one 100. No? <coughs> well, that's not really changing anything, is it? Oh, I know why. It's because uh, over here under appearance, it's facing camera. So uh, if I change this to free, then it has this random rotation. See, it's sort of floating up now. It looks quite cool. It's quite sort of interesting. Um, and if I put this gravity back to zero, now it's just going to be sort of, uh, sort of orbiting around there, see? So this is sort of basically it's another way to animate stuff, right? Like instead of having this constant stream of particles, we can just have one object that's sort of doing this random rotation. Um, uh, what was I going to change? Oh yeah, the acceleration. Where's that? I think it's under movement and then acceleration. So you can have this uh, x, y, z. So I want to go up, accelerate by one. Is that going to work? Here we go, see it sort of speeds up. What about 10? It gets faster and faster. It's kind of interesting. But you can also have the uh, gravity scale. And if I click on that little arrow beside gravity scale, there's a random as well. So maybe if I want this on negative 1. Yes, it's floating up like that. And I, I can put random on uh, 1. So some, sometimes it's going to be slow, sometimes it's going to be a bit quicker, sometimes it's not moving at all there, and sometimes it's really fast. Yeah, so each each sort of um, particle that's generated is generated at this sort of random gravity scale. So that becomes really interesting when you have a big account, right? So if I have 10, sort of, some of them sort of cluster, and some of them sort of just uh, flow, float straight up. So again, the sort of random quality to the particles really sort of helps uh, make it really interesting. Um, and if I put this on 20, what's that going to do? It's going to divide 20 seconds by 10. So it's going to be like a particle every 2 seconds. And they're going to just fly up. Some of them are going to fly up. Some of them are going to go a bit slower. Um, so I'm going to put that to 10 as well. It's like every second one's generated. And again with the size. So you can, uh, maybe I'll put the size on, on 10. So some, like they're really big now. And then you can uh, click on that little arrow beside size and there's a random. And I'll change that to 1 as well. So some of them are really big and some of them are a bit smaller. So again, sort of quite interesting. Um, cool. Now I think it's probably a good time to change the geometry to something more interesting. Uh, what did I have before? Game levels. Um, maybe I'll try uh, weaving numbers. Well, usually you can see. Oh, there, there we go. Oh, is that a number? Number two. Open that and see what that does. Whoa. Really sort of massive. So they're quite big, so I might change this to a, to one. There we go, that's kind of cool. So 
generating these uh, little zeros. And then if I change the count to, uh, I change this to like 40. So what that does. So it emits quite like a, a big sort of stream of them. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, huh? And so, you know, they're using this default replace me material. So that's uh, defined again under here, under appearance material. And how this works is it's a, uh, you got to select the material with the material editor that you want. Uh, where is the material? Uh, what was it? Weaving numbers. I'll try that. Oh, that's sort of a default one. There we are. We'll make it this pattern here. So you sort of select the material you want, and then um, oh. oh, sorry. So you select the material in the material editor you want, and then go back to the particle uh, editor, and then click on this little little arrow here, and it'll pick the material you've got in the material editor. It should apply it to, or not. Ah, oh, maybe you need to pick the master material. Sorry. Uh, where were we? Yeah, I'll try this one. This one here. And then, uh, yeah, there we go. Should have worked. Cool. So that's sort of a way to generate animations as well. And now because I've got this, this one particle set up, I can actually like copy this around, yeah? So I'll, I'll copy another one over here. It might get a bit laggy. But, um, you know. So now you can sort of just copy these things around and might be a really sort of interesting part of your, um, your animation. And again, because they're using all, all the same um, particle effect, all these different particle effects that I copied around, um, they're all referencing the same uh, particle effect, wherever that is set. So I go back to the database view and then the particle editor. So if I change that, the properties of that particle effect, it'll update across all of them, right? <coughs> so if I change this to 80 for example they're all going to duplicate or emit twice as many uh, objects that's pretty cool eh? Um, maybe I'll up this to like 4 or something yeah now we're talking this sort of blobby mesh it's kind of crazy put that back to 2 maybe Quite interesting. Cool. And what about if we change uh, change the component now? Do something with a bit more uh, shape to it. Oh, this was that original one. So I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll put it back like this. Whoa, it's a bit sort of crazy. We're sort of trapped. I think because the um, object is so big. So I'm just sort of panning backwards now, sort of zooming out. Whoa, it's like this huge sort of a maelstrom of uh, craziness. It's kind of interesting. So what I might do is I'll, I'll change the size to 0 0.1. Here we go. Uh, I'll sort of change my speed and zoom back in. Cool. <laughs> So that's sort of quite a uh, efficient or a quick way to get some crazy uh, animation happening as well. Uh, might be a, a strategy. Often the simpler it is, the better. So maybe I'll put this rotation back to zero and just have them sort of calm down a bit. So now they're just sort of floating up. I reckon it's amazingly cool. It's quite interesting. Oh, there's my fish. 
<laughs> okay, uh, I think that should give you a basic kind of understanding of, of particles and how you can, you can attach a geometry to it and then you can uh, you get some crazy stuff happening. We have to start spinning a little bit uh, around this way. Oh, that's, that's far too much. There's this one on a, a tin. Or is it this one? Ah, oh, yeah, that's sort of what I wanted, but a little bit less, maybe it's like 20. Cool how they're sort of lasting quite a long time. Uh, interesting, yeah. Maybe it's a bit crazy, right? Some interesting sort of textures happening there. So I'm just sort of flying straight up now, straight through it. And I was, yeah, flying back a bit. Sorry for the motion sickness. Sort of messed around with that enough, so I'll close that. Wow, cool. So that's sort of quite cool. Maybe I'll have one over there and then one over here and then one here. It's a big sort of wall of particles moving up. Yeah, so, you know, super digital, super abstract. Uh, anyway, have fun with that. Cool, see ya.